What is going on guys and welcome back to another Wi-Fi battle. This time I'm using a kind of random team. Um, it's actually some older guys that I've used in the past. Except for Whiskash. He's kind of new and he's he's pretty fun to use. So I was like, you know what? I need a Whiskash. That guy is badass. So I'm using him. Um, so I knew that he'd be leading off with his Bronzong, and that's perfect because I send out Gatorade, who is able to uh, throw some powder at that bitch and somehow it makes him fall asleep, so that's nice. We got a sleeping bell over here, which is kind of weird, his eyes are still open, that guy, uh, Bronzong apparently doesn't get the the, uh, the sleep animation, so. I now decide to switch into Herp, just kind of because at this point I'm like, you know what, sleeping Bronzong, why the hell not send in this guy and maybe set up a substitute. I actually kind of forgot though that he has a fucking jump bluff on his team, so my substitute is not going to cut it here because he's going to be able to come in and encore me, so... That kind of blows. This uh, this jump bluff is actually going to be quite the problem in this match. It kind of started out as a dick, and he ends as a dick also. I'll tell you what. Uh, now I, I decided to send in Gatorade because I know he's going to leech seed. I know what these things do. They sleep powder, leech seed, and encore, and just basically just annoy the shit out of you. Like I've said in the past, you, you, you know, if you know me, you know that I do not like jump bluffs. But uh, yeah, I go for the leech seed as the, as the switch happens because I knew he was going to switch out. So I got a leech seed off on that Bronzong, which is pretty damn nice. And uh, now I thought I was going to be able to get a, sweet, a, th a free switch into my, um, my cannons over here. But it turns out that he decides to wake up first turn or second turn or whatever the hell that is and uh, toxic me. Which isn't overall too bad, I guess, because cannons kind of just... Cannons just kind of doesn't give a shit. That's just how he rolls. I felt like obvious flamethrower is obvious, so I went for the Thunderbolt, hoping that he was going to bring in his Togekiss, but he brings in this asshole with the Mohawk. And this, you know, this thing actually absorbs attack way better than I thought it was going to. I got a critical hit on that Thunderbolt right there, and I was like, holy hell, I actually don't think I noticed that crit, which led me to believe that this Focus Blast would have killed, and it didn't. And I was like, holy shit, what, 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 what is this? And he's able to go for the knockoff and knock off my expert belt. So now I'm going to be doing, like, no damage to shit. Well, actually, I mean, I'm not going to get the, uh, the expert belt boost, which kind of blows. And I'm also, you know, poisoned as fuck at this point. So I actually just went for the Thunderbolt. And here was, this was actually one of my major misplays in this match, was letting cannons die early. I should have realized that that Bronzong and shit was going to be a problem, and Magmordar definitely would have come in handy very late in the game. But, uh, yeah, so now I bring out Flygon because he knows that I'm going to be able to outspeed, and I just went for the U-turn as I predict a switch as he brings in his Togekiss. So that's pretty nice because now I get to kind of switch in whatever the hell I want on this stupid bird right here. And these things... <laughs> Togekisses are really fuck your day up, I'll tell you what. Um, I brought in Gatorade because I realized that his uh, Bronzong's awake now, so now I'm free to put something to sleep. But he realizes that I'm going to do that, and he actually goes into his uh, Lucifer over here. That's, a, that's an appropriate name for that asshole right there, I'll tell you what. Um, so yeah, the sleep powder doesn't work, and I know that he's probably going to encore or something, so I just decide to switch into Salamence, get that little free switch, and then I'm going to be able to outspeed and hit it with a Stone Edge. But that is also not a very good move, because it's obviously not going to be able to kill it, and he doesn't miss his sleep powder, which I was kind of hoping for. And um, Flygon is definitely asleep now. But not to worry, because Miltank can come in and ring his bell and wake shit up if he wants to later on. So we're all good. Um, now I realize that he's probably going to be uh, doing his stupid jump bluff thing, going for the lead seed, but... You know, I probably should have switched into Roserade on that turn because it could have scared him out with the uh, Sludge Bomb. But then again, he would just bring out his Bronzong and he would probably end up asleep again. But who knows if I would have switched in my Roserade on that turn. That probably actually would have been quite a better play. I actually made a fuckload of just stupid plays in this match. and It didn't help that this guy's Pokemon were just extremely annoying. But uh, I went for the Rock Slide there just to break the substitute. He can't really hurt me. All he can do is substitute and stuff and get my lead seed damage. You know, it's like you can absorb my health, bro. You have it. Fuck you, Jump Bluff. Hitmonlee don't even need it. Hitmonlee is another guy that doesn't really need health. As long as he's around, he can sweep shit up like a damn broom. So now he decides to bring out Hank, which is going to avoid rocks or a Rock Slide, which is kind of annoying. And now he's just going to you know sap my health with his Elite Seed. So I realize that I'm kind of digging myself a hole here with Hitmonlee. I'm going to need that dude for later, so I save him and I go into Titty Milk. And I also realize this is a perfect time for Titty Milk to go for uh, the uh, Heal Bell thing and get that... Uh, Flygon woken up, so that's going to be kind of nice. But first, I go for the Thunder Wave, actually. So yeah, that's that's actually what I do first. I realized that this this Hank right here, he's he's causing problems. Because now that I don't have my Magmortar, I really do not have much of a way to kill this thing. I'm going to have to play it quite smart. So I go for the Heal Bell now to get my Flygon awake, so that's going to be nice. Um, and now I have to formulate a plan to kill this thing. Because Miltank is not going to be able to do it with her Body Slam and stuff, but... Um, yeah, so I decided now I'm going to switch out. I'm going to Gatorade because I think Gatorade can probably, you know, stall this thing out a little bit. I can go for the lead seed, get some continual health, and he might get some para hacks eventually. So that's kind of nice. Um, Roserade takes an Earthquake, leaves it with 69 HP, giggity, which is pretty awesome. And uh, now I go for the Sludge Bomb, actually predicting the fucking Jump Bluff to come in. And that would have been a clutch play right there. He was, I, th I was expecting him to predict the lead seed going into Jump Bluff and then 
dying to the sludge bomb, but he actually just kind of wants his Brong Dong to stay in here and just kind of do damage. He actually goes for the Toxic, uh, maybe thinking I was going to switch or something, but yeah, definitely negatory on that one. Uh, so now that this thing is lead seeded, there's really not much that he can, get, can do. I'm getting Black Sludge and lead seed and shit, so I mean, Rose Raid's looking good. I decide to switch him out because now I go into Salamence thinking that he's going to switch also, and it turns out that he actually just stays in and goes for the Toxic again. I was like... Why would you Toxic on my Roserade? I don't, I don't understand. Roserade needs another move to be able to hit this thing, but I could have stayed in and Giga Drained it, which would have been the smart move. I would have taken more Lead Seed and stuff, but, you know, whatever. Shit happens. So, I tell Salamence to go ahead and U-turn, um, just realizing that I can't one-hit KO this thing. The U-turn actually activates its red card, which kind of sucks because I can't choose what I want to switch into, and it, red cards would be into Gatorade, which overall blows massive dick because now Gatorade's going to take this Gyro Ball and then die, which was really just kind of sad. I was like, really? What what, what the hell? I'm getting fucked up by this Bronzong all because I let my Magmordar die already. Damn it. <laughs> That's Craggy. Fucked me up. But yeah, so I bring in my Miltank as he predicts the Body Slam, bringing in his uh, Chandelure. You know, I would actually like to watch Titty Moke try to Body Slam a Ghost type. That would be pretty funny. I uh, just fly right through him. But yeah, so I predict this thing to be... I don't know what kind of Chandelure this thing is yet. And this was my first, my other mistake. I fucking bring in Salamence as a... Uh, I get tricked to choice specs, which absolutely blows, because that was actually a major, major play in the game right there, and it kind of fucked me. So now, I'm restricted to one move as if I were choice scarfed, except I just don't get the speed from it, which absolutely blows. Now he brings out this Togekiss, which would have fucking taken a rock, or a stone edge to the damn face, but he actually uh, misses it, and then decides to, decides to switch out into his Scraggles, just kind of, uh, to get the Intimidate, I guess, and then to just pretty much just die. I, he actually takes this stone edge, which I was like... What the fuck? How defensive is this Craggy? Like, oh my god. I mean, I understand the Intimidate and then the Resistance, but holy shit. Uh, luckily, I hit the second one. I didn't miss I didn't miss this, the next Stone Edge, which is like, whew, holy shit, thank god. And uh, Salamence is actually just taking mad toxic damage out here. So now he brings out Hank, and I'm just like, okay, I'll save this uh, Choice Specs physical attacking Flygon for later, and now I bring out Herp, and Herp is going to go ahead and take a Gyro Ball. I know that Herp can take these attacks, and I actually made a really bad play here not going for the Dragon Dance on the first turn, as I just go for the Waterfall, which is shitty because um, I knock myself down to 68 with the Life Orb, and then he goes for the Earthquake, which doesn't kill me, and then I was like, you know what, now I'll Dragon Dance and hope that he gets Parahax, and that would be really awesome because then I could have all the speeds I want, and he doesn't get Parahax, which kind of blows, but it's not like you can just expect it, and that right there is a sad Whiskash. Look at him. Look at how sad he is. How do you feel about this, Dominic? How do you feel? <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of a failed maneuver right there. Now all I can do is bring in Salamence, and I actually just kind of go for the Stone Edge, expecting it to... I don't know why I was expecting it to kill. I was like, maybe this won't be a physically... a physical attacking Bronzong, and I literally didn't have any other move to go for. Um, if he were to have switched, Stone Edge would have been the only move that I could do, but yeah, so he didn't get Parahax and he's able to kill my Flygons, and now I bring in Last Resort, Hitmonlee, which is just kind of going to go for the old fake out, knock it down with a critical hit to like 1 HP, and then I get my Unburden boost, so now I'm fast as hell, and now it's like, okay, let's see if we can rip shit apart here, Hitmonlee. So the Bronzong is finally dead. That was like what I've been wanting to see this whole damn match, that stupid Bronzong sinking into the battlefield, but uh, he brings out this Weavile, I'm thinking, just to trigger me into close combat as he brings out this Jump Luff, and what, I don't really know what he was thinking, this Jump Luff's definitely going to die. Uh, maybe he was thinking he was going to be able to Encore me, so then he, I wouldn't be able to touch his uh, Chandelure or something, but yeah, so that thing's dead as hell. We're, we're making some progress here. Now he brings Blackout, <laughs> back out Black Ice, and uh, he's going to be outsped and close combat it to the face, which is awesome as hell, and that thing's dead. He, that Weavile did not get to do a damn thing in this match, so that's perfect. So now he's going to bring out... Um, his filamental again, and I was actually worried about him being able to outspeed with that choice scarf and then killing me, so I went into Titty Milk as he uh, goes for the sh Shadow Ball, I believe here. Yeah, he goes for the Shadow Ball, it doesn't affect Titty Milk, and I was really hoping to be able to get a, um, a Thunder Wave off on this fucking asshole of a Chandelure, but he brings out his Togekiss, which is going to uh, take that Thunder Wave and not really give a shit, and my Mill Tank is not really going to be able to hurt this thing, honestly. I can sit in here and Body Slam all I want. I really can't switch into my Hitmonlee because I don't want it to take an Air Slash or something and die. So I really can't risk it, so I honestly just have to sit in here and just kind of thunder Body Slam. And he gets the Parahax on the first turn, which kind of pissed me off. It was like, damn it, I could have just switched into Hitmonlee, but honestly, Hitmonlee probably wouldn't have been able to do much with uh, Rock Slide. It wouldn't have killed it, I know that for sure. So, you know, at least Miltank's going to be able to stay in here and try to go for some Body Slams and knock it down to at least the point where my Hitmonlee can come in 
and maybe kill it with like a fake out and then a rock slide. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get my speed boost from the unburdened because I already used my item. So I'm basically fucked here. Um, he actually decides to go for the nasty plot now. And he's like, okay, he's like, you know what, Miltank, you're about to get fucked up, bro. And Miltank's kind of accepting that at this point. He's paralyzed. He, you know, at least I'm faster at this point. But um, I'm able to get off as many body slams as I possibly can, which was perfect. I get it down to like half, and then he goes for the air slash, which... Doesn't kill Mail Tank, gets me down to like 55 HP, which is perfect, and then I'm like, okay, hopefully I can get another Body Slam off, because then I feel pretty confident about Hitmonlee being able to come in and Rock Slide that hoe, so I do get another Body Slam off, and then he's able to uh, kill me with an Air Slash, which is, you know, that's fine by me. Mail Tank pretty much did all he could do against this thing, you know, you know and I'm proud of her, you know what I mean? <laughs> so now all I can do is bring in my, uh, my, my Kung Foot, which is surprisingly shaped like a chicken leg, and I can fake this thing out, smack it right in the stupid bird face, and then I can kill it with a Rock Slide, so... This is coming down to basically if uh, that chandelier can kill me with an attack, which it definitely can. And now that it is uh, choice scarfed, it's going to be able to uh, outspeed my ass. And it would have been nice for Hitmonlee to keep that unburdened because that would have been fucking sweet. And I would have been able to fuck that chandelier up with a rock slide. But unfortunately, this guy comes in. His shiny chandelier is going to spit some flames at me. And that is the end of the match. So that was a really good match. I had fun. It really came down to me uh, playing my Hitmonlee right. But... That was really, you know, it was a well-played match on both of our sides, and I had a fun time doing it. So if you guys enjoyed this battle, click the thumbs up button on the little bottom left of your screen there, and I would be appreciative. Thanks, guys.